medicine rotation. Like surgery, it's gonna be split up where after the first three weeks, we will have a group learning week, then we'll have our mid-year break. Also like surgery, the weeks will be split up into more subspecialties. The first week for me is gonna be hematology and oncology or hemonc. The second week is gonna be radiotherapy and oncology or rattle. The third week is gonna be general medicine at our private hospital Calvary, then group learning week, then our break. Then the final three weeks are going to be on the gen med ward at our public hospital, the LGH. Right now, I'm looking through the rotation outline for each rotation we're given a small PDF booklet which explains all the essential things like simply what time do I show up tomorrow and where. It also tells us about weekly tutorials and presentations or things that we need signed off throughout the time and when clinics and meetings and things like that are on that might be relevant to the ward or the subspecialty attachment that you're on. So I said before the second week was going to be radonc, but it's actually medical and radonc. If I look to hematology and oncology, that's where I'm starting. Now where do I start on the first day? Meet at 8am at the Holman Clinic, which is level 1 of the LGH. Ring your intern a few days before you are due to start to organise when and where to meet them. Here we've got our expectations, basically learning objectives and which things that we're expected to go to and see. So I'm really excited about this rotation. I've never done hematology or oncology specifically before. So I think I will have a lot to learn. I think it will be a very different pace after being in surgery. I'll take some snippets for you throughout the week. on my first day of my medicine rotation and we've even been to the gym this morning because no more 7 a.m. starts. Going by the unit outline, we're going to meet at 8 a.m. at the Holman Clinic. I'm really excited about this rotation. And my OSCE study is going to start as well, so that'll feel good to get going. All the forms of things like that from the last rotation, surgery, are going to be due tomorrow on Tuesday. I just need to finish a few more pieces of research for my logbook before that will be ready to submit for me. So I'm going to do that at lunchtime today. All right. o'clock on Wednesday, day three of my med rotation and specifically my heme onc rotation this week. We're just a very small team. There's one registrar, two interns, and I have one other med student with me, Anna, who I was on GP with. A standard day is showing up at 8 a.m. and doing the ward rounds. The ward rounds are very different to the surgical ward rounds. You spend a lot longer with and between patients because you do a more complex assessment of the patient. And throughout the day, the consultants will come and check on their patients and we'll do another mini ward round with their specific patients. We're very quiet at the moment. We only have Four patients on our ward today, two in ICU and one in rehab. And it hasn't been much different for the first two, two days either. We've only had, I think, five of our own patients on the ward. Throughout the day, you generally do jobs. We have short meetings each day with Allied Health about the patients. Today, we had a meeting in the Holman Clinic talking about different patient cases. After that, we had another meeting which involved all the consultants in hematology, but also the infectious disease team. On Monday, I got to see a bone marrow biopsy, which is just done as an outpatient, a bit of local anesthetic, and you take an aspirate and also a trephine biopsy. And this afternoon, I'm gonna see a pleural tap for patient with T-cell lymphoma who's presented acutely with shortness of breath. CT has shown a large pleural effusion. He's also got fluid overload with a low albumin, so he's also going to receive an albumin transfusion. Right now it's lunch. I'm going to grab some coffee. It is Thursday. Hello from the 
Cardigan. <laughs> I wanted to check in and remember this moment because Aaron's sister has had a baby so we just went and visited her. She had the baby last night so we visited her on lunch just now and my uncle had a baby last week. Babies everywhere. There is actually nothing happening on the ward right now. We've only got four patients again today. The same patients and so the interns are doing discharge summaries and the reg has gone to a tutorial. So we were actually offered to go home early which is actually perfect today because I really 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 would like to get some OSCE study done. I'm doing my OSCE video at the moment but this week is my planning sort of week for OSCEs and I've basically sorted out my list to the point that I'm pretty happy with them in terms of making a plan to move forward with it and in doing that I found all these topics that I've never ever touched before and so I've gathered a bunch of information to start with, to start learning about them a bit and I just want to sit down and start going through all that. Lots of ethical type, protocol type OSCEs which we don't really do in fourth year but all really important topics to know going into internship anyway. Things like how to talk to a patient and handle the situation when you make a mistake, i.e. open disclosure, patients wanting to discharge against medical advice, certifying death and consenting for blood transfusions and more of those kinds of things. So I'm quite interested to read up on those things anyway. Just pulled up at home, I'm going to go in now and get to work. We've got gym tonight. I can't wait to get back to my class after having last week away in the territory and I'm so excited to see everybody again. So I need to make some time this afternoon as well to go over some tracks to teach at gym <laughs> because I am quickly forgetting them all. Bye! It's Sunday night at the end of my first week of my med rotation so my one only week of Haymonk is over and next week I'm going on to radiation and medical oncology. It's actually on the exact same ward and I happen to actually have the exact same intern because uh, this week the two, the intern on Heme Onk and the intern on Rad Onk are swapping over. It happens to be one of my friends. Really nice to be working with her. So in Heme Onk it's understandably more hematological cancers and in radiation oncology it is more solid tumours. We actually have a schedule in our unit outline for this week which I will show you now. Going into our rotation guideline. Heme Onk. Rad Onk. There we go. So tomorrow morning, I don't think we'll have the multidisciplinary meeting because I'm quite sure that was on last week. But it looks like at 9 o'clock we'll have a clinic. So after our 8 a.m. ward rounds, we will probably dash off in the middle of them to go down to clinic. We'll go down at the end of the ward round to go to clinic. It depends what the team would rather us do. Looks like there's a journal club first thing on Tuesday morning. And journal clubs are really just uh, sit down sessions where one or more people bring along a journal article and share it with the group. It's a nice way to learn up to date information. Last week we didn't actually have any tutorials with any consultants because they were away but this week we should have some. But yeah I'm really enjoying this rotation. I really think I am definitely a med person rather than a surgical person but I realize it is possible that it's still too early for me to say that but I really do enjoy med quite a lot. I don't quite feel as comfortable in surgery so I'm looking forward to the next week again. My OSCE study slash organizing is going well and I'm happy to be able to be back more regularly at gym now that these trips away and surgery on calls are over. I know that I miss it a lot but I don't even realize how much I miss it until I get into the gym and see everyone and it's just such an awesome refreshing feeling so that's really awesome. Quick reminder for everyone else out there to keep doing the things you love. You've always got time for them even if you have to cut down on how much you'd ideally do. You've always got time for those things. Before we start this Radonk rotation we have some recommended reading. So I'm just about to go through that now. well which might be a good tip for you guys as I take around this clipboard and kind of start it off carrying around progress notes and things to read about the specific rotation and blood forms and things like that that I might need but then I kind of found that as I started to do more on the wards it was sort of really inconvenient <laughs> and you just carry those notes and things around um, as you needed them in ward rounds. What I'm using it for this year is I actually put some notes in here to study with at times I would not do anything because unfortunately it is um, more often than ideal. We're sort of sitting around waiting for things to happen or waiting for meetings to start where people are late or um, so on and so on. And I actually feel like I can get quite a bit done during these waiting times 
just reading my notes and summaries. To me, it's just a very practical way to get some extra study done. So today I'm bringing... Just been reading this week about some of the protocolized stuff, such as getting knee stick injuries. And... I've also put in some of my oof, summary emergency notes. So this one you can't see the title, but this one is on traumatic brain injury and the emergency manager of that. All the complications that you might be considering trying to rule out in that time. And just some reminders about the primary survey and secondary survey, sorts of things that you'll be looking at. And yeah, I've got some other emergency stations behind that as well. Anaphylaxis, acute coronary syndrome, other GI bleeds, asthma, acute asthma attack. So yeah, I'm gonna hopefully be able to <laughs> refresh a little bit on those topics in times where we're not doing much. This is something that I started doing last year and it's been so, so helpful when it comes up towards OSCE time and making me feel a bit more organized. Like I've said, our wards have been so quiet today, exceptionally quiet. I just went back after lunch and our intern was literally just doing discharge summaries. I've been finishing in around 3, 3.30 each day, which is a really nice change for me coming from GP and surgery where you do quite long and late days. And particularly at this time when I'm really starting to get into my OSCE study, it is so convenient to have some extra time to really get on with that. So while it's not ideal from a learning perspective, for the clinical placements because we have less patients. It is nice from an OSCE perspective, which is something that I'm highly conscious of at this point. <laughs> so I do appreciate the dramatic shift in hours on mid at the moment. My day-to-day -day setup is working really well, finishing at about 3.30. So I'm coming home and using those extra few hours in the day to do more study. To be honest, I do think the hours in surgery are a little bit over the top. The standard hour days from 7 o'clock or 6.45 until 5, 5.30, it's not too bad. But then when you add the on-calls on top of that, it really eats up a lot of your free time. And, and I would probably say it takes away your ability to live a balanced lifestyle during that rotation period. Outside of those hours that I was on placement, I was also on call. I was also doing my assignments my logbook and each week preparing one to three oral presentations for the grand rounds on Thursday. The time for the rest of your life outside of that over the, that six week period is um, small. Maybe if I was more surgically inclined I would not care about dropping the rest of my life because I'd just be so passionate in oral learning and trying to take it all in but yeah I just I was not balanced in that time and it showed through with my exhaustion. Coming on to med now has made me realize how tired I was during surgery. And I don't want to be one of those people who put so much into medicine that I lose my life outside of that. It's not wrong if that's what you want to do. And if you have that passion for medicine, that all-consuming, endless passion to be in the hospital and do the placements and you, you remain inquisitive and, and wholly engaged and interested, then it's excellent. But for me, anyway, okay. <laughs> Let's get on to work. Today I'm going to reproduce a quick tutorial that my Reg on Radonc has given me on opioids because I found it really useful. I've updated my logbook at lunchtime. We're going to finish preparing some cases for an OSCE tutor that we're taking at 
five o'clock this afternoon. I'm not sure if I mentioned before, but as a fifth year student, we all group up into groups of three to four, and we take on groups of three to four fourth year students who do OSCE tutors with, usually on a second weekly or weekly basis. More coming up towards their exams, which are at the end of the year, whereas ours are in August. Thinking for them, I'm gonna do a needle stick injury case, because that's something that I've just been refreshing myself for my OSCE study. And the other case I wanted to do was an STI case, because there are some confidentiality issues that come into that that are important for med students to know for OSCEs as well. After we do our practice OSCEs, we'd like to go through some emergency protocols, the ABCD management. We're thinking we might do asthma. That includes doing the actual assessments, so looking at the airway, breathing, so on and so on, and then what you actually do at each point to manage the patient, for example. Find a wheeze and you give subutamol and what dose. Usually in those scenarios, you'd also be quizzed on things later down the track, like giving systemic steroids and ongoing management in the ward immediately after you've done that emergency scenario. So monitoring, 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 and the things that are involved with that. As for the rest of the week, tomorrow is a normal day. We've got our gym class in the afternoon. Friday, I've got my normal volunteer tutor that I do with my client through the library. He has dyslexia, but he ultimately like to be a personal trainer and sit down to take that course. So we're working through some biomechanical concepts in conjunction with anatomy at the moment. On Saturday morning, I'll take my second and final gym class for the week, and then we're gonna rush over to the airport because we're gonna jump on a plane and go to Melbourne for a surprise dinner for my nan and my second cousin's birthday because they live interstate so all of us kids from across Tassie and also some living in Melbourne we're going to yeah surprise them for our dinner so it's gonna be really lovely yeah all right this opioid tutorial super nice and basic and that's really what I needed for opioids at this point